In the previous video, I defined four models in SQL Alchemy 2.0, customer, credit card, order, and product. And I included some one-to-many relationships and many-to-many -many relationships. If you haven't watched that video yet, check it out first. In this video, I'm going to connect to a local SQLite database, set up the SQL tools extension to inspect that database, and fill my tables with interesting data using the Faker package. Let's get started from where we left off last time. Let's go down here and set up a database connection. And we're going to create tables uh, using SQLite with a local file. So, you know, there's many different SQL backends we could use, like MySQL, Postgres, etc. I typically use Postgres in production. But for this experiment here, SQLite is a really nice local option because it's just going to save inside a file. So we do need to import create engine so that we can use that function. I'm going to say engine equals, and here you see it auto-completed what we need. Uh, so this is the, you know, the way of forming a URI that connects to a SQLite database uh, that's just stored in a file. And this is going to be the name of the file, and it's just going to make it inside our local folder. And then this parameter echo equals true. This is a really nice parameter when you're developing because it echoes all the SQL statements that it makes. I love using an ORM because it can you know, take care of helping us avoid SQL injection attacks. It can also make some hard things easy, but I also like to know what's going on behind the hood. So with echo equals true, I'm gonna see those SQL statements as it creates them. In order to actually create the tables, we call this line here. So base is you know that class that we inherited uh, all of our tables inherited from and we tell it to create all from base.metadata using this engine once again let's try running this code now if you look at that what you see is a bunch of sql statements a bunch of create table statements and we can look to see how it turned those mapped columns into sql attributes so we have four create table statements here that looks really promising but wouldn't it be cool if we could actually visually inspect these tables and see what they look like using a UI. We can do that using my favorite extension, SQL Tools. If you don't have SQL Tools installed yet, go to your extensions bar here and search for SQL Tools. Here it is, I already have it installed, but you would you know, hit install. And then you also need to get the driver for whatever type of SQL you're gonna be using. Uh, so since I'm doing SQLite, I would search for that and then find the driver here. So I need to install both these extensions and I do have these both installed. And the reason mine are already installed is that I'm actually inside a dev container and inside my dev container.json, I've put the extensions I want. So you can see there's some Python extensions and then there's the SQL tools extensions. There's the core SQL tools extension and then the SQLite driver. Also, if we go down, we see this setting here, SQL tools .use node road time runtime true. You might wonder, why the heck are we using Node? We've been doing Python this whole time. It's because the SQLite driver actually that they're using for this extension uses a Node package. And so you do need to use the Node runtime and I have added Node to my dev container in addition to using a Python base image. So you can see here, my base image is Python 3.11, but I have this Node feature and the whole reason I have that is to support the SQLite extension. And you know, there's a lot going on in this dev container file you're welcome to just take it from my public repo if you're hoping to set up a very similar environment in your VS code or your GitHub code spaces. So let's actually try connecting with SQL tools. It says no connections found and prompts us to add a new connection. And we select the driver and we only have one option here and just give it a name, database, and a file. And for the file, it was called mydatabase.db and it's just here inside the root. And then that looks good. Save connection, go back to the extension and we'll select this and it will connect and you can see it's connected. That's what this little icon indicates that it's connected. And then we can expand it and see the tables inside it. Here we see the four tables, credit card, customer, order, product. And we can, for each of these, we can use the magnifying glass to show all the records in it. But of course there are zero records because we haven't inserted anything yet. That will be our next step. We can also expand here to see the columns. So we have an ID, customer ID number, customer, it's a bunch of fields, order, product. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually add some data inside this table. 
In order to actually insert data, we need a session object. There are a bunch of ways to create session objects. I'm going to use the session context manager because I think that's a nice way. So say with session. So when, you know, using the constructor session as session, there we go. And Copilot immediately wants to create a customer. Okay, so we'll create this customer. Make sure it has all the required fields. Looks like it also wants to create a credit card. So we'll go create that and associate the credit card with the customer, add the customer to the session. So we'll use session.add. And finally, we need to commit the session to the database. And this is the point where it's actually going to execute those SQL statements against the database. Let's try this out and see what happens. We need to import. This is why we have those red squigglies. Gotta pay attention to those red squigglies. So where does session come from? We'll just add it here, go back down and run this. No more red squigglies. All right, and let's look at the SQL here. We see insert into customer with these values, insert into credit card with these values, and then commit. If we go over to our SQL tools, we should be able to now look at the customer records. And ta-da, we see John Doe on Main Street. And then does he have a credit card? He does have a credit card. You see this customer ID is one, which is the same as his ID. Very cool. Next, let's add some more customers and maybe also some products as well. Let's start with inserting 10 products for I in range 10. It's going to create product I with a very exciting description and category. Uh, add the product and we could do the commit there. We could also just leave our commit at the end too. So we'll just leave it at the end. And then let's do the same here is cre create 10 customers for I in range 10. It's interesting that it doesn't, for some reason, Copilot does not like to autocomplete the email address and that might be for security reasons. And delete all these. There we go. Let's try this out. And now if we look at customer, we see a bunch more customers and we still got John in there because we made him before. Then if we look at product, we see a bunch of products. All right, so this is really cool, right? We're able to create data and actually see that data using SQL tools. But the thing that I don't like is that this data feels pretty fake, pretty boring, right? Looking at those customers, they're all on Main Street. <laughs> they're all in the US. It doesn't really feel representative of, uh, you know, an actual user base, I would hope that our customers would come from more than just Main Street and more than just the US. And, you know, you might say like, well, why does this matter? Like, well, if we were using our fake data to, you know, do any sort of testing, it's really good to have more representative data so that our tests are more likely to, you know, discover edge cases. So what I want to do is use a library to generate fake data. And there's a couple different packages for generating fake data in Python. The one that I really like is called Faker. Here are the docs for Faker, and you can see an example of all the sorts of things you can do with Faker. So fake colors, fake companies, credit cards, currencies, fake phone numbers, fake person, that's really, really helpful. So that is what we're going to use, and I already have it installed. So I'll go ahead and just import it here. I am going to create a new instance of the Faker class. If I do it like this, then it has a default locale of NUS, but I want to, you know, I want to represent customers from outside the US as well. So what I'm going to do is pass in more locales. Uh, so I'll go ahead and make a list and let's see what it suggested. Well, that's just a bunch more of English locales. I want some Spanish locales as well. Oh, German. I do know a little bit of German, so I should be able to read that data. And we've got some French. We could even look at Japanese, even though I won't be able to read those characters. Uh, so there, so this is really going to represent a lot more uh, geographic diversity in our data, and that's really nice. There we have our instance of the Faker class, and now we can use it. I'm going to leave products the way they are because uh, I'm not too concerned about them. But customers, I definitely want to change these up. Instead of this hard-coded you know, name with the I, I'm going to use fake.name. And then for email address, I'll do fake.email. For this one, I'll do fake.address. And for country code, do fake.countrycode. 
So this is one way of doing it. You can also create a fake dot person and then extract the attributes from that person. I kind of like mixing them up here because I think it makes it, you know, even more, even more diverse in a way. But it'd probably be more standard to use that fake dot person constructor. All right, let's try this out. I'm really excited to see what the data looks like now. Okay, so let's look at customer and see what we have here. So we've got a lot more things going on here. You can see all different names, different email addresses, and really different addresses. And that's the part that I find really valuable because if you have any sort of address validation code in your code base, you know, if you're just testing it on one main street, it's probably gonna work. But if you're testing it on, you know, this variety of addresses here, you're much more likely to run into edge cases, right? Like, are you handling, a, you know, non-ASCII characters correctly? Are you handling situations where the address isn't just, you know, a street name? Just such a big variety in addresses here. And that's really, really exciting. Maybe we should make even more customers because it's easy. So do a hundred customers. Cool. We want the customers to actually make some orders. So let's say insert an order of a random product ID using their credit card. So let's create a credit card for each customer. That's once again, going to use a fake function. So fake.creditcard number, and let's add that to the session. And now let's try having the customer actually make an order. So here, order equals order, customer, customer, product ID, fake.randomint min one to 10. Well, that is going to work because we did create 10 products. So those IDs should exist. There's other ways of doing that to make sure that the, the um, you know, ID is from the table, but I think that should actually work. Yeah, we can even change up the quantity here and add that order. Okay, so let's take a look at this. And now let's go ahead and look at orders. See what we got here. Lots and lots of numbers because, you know, the order class is just relating, you know, things, a lot of things together. So relating customers to products. Uh, you can see a variety of quantity here. We could also tell Coldboiler, like, well, we don't want to just insert one order. Like, you know, some customers are going to make multiple orders. So we'll say insert random amount of orders of random product IDs using their credit card. So here it is using fakes random in function. That's another thing offered by Faker. Could also be using the Python random module. And then this code should pretty much be the same as this code here. Yeah. All right, so that's really gonna give us a nice variety in terms of you know, how many orders each customer makes and even the quantity of a product within an order. The database tables are now filled with interesting data thanks to that Faker package. So in this video, we explored that data using SQL tools, a nifty extension that every database user should have on hand. In the next video, I'll explore the data using SQL Alchemy 2.0 and the select function, you know, to actually do some queries. Hope to see you there.